r slash credit. What's the weirdest date you have been on? This will get buried and is far too long. Oh well. Blind date. I was told to expect someone very intelligent, very mature, owned his own startup business, and very successful. He calls beforehand, suggests he take me out to eat, and then we meet up with mutual friends at a popular salsa dancing place later. Okay, sounds great. Guy shows up looking like a 17 year old with gelled spiky hair and a ratty t-shirt. Okay, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. I go to get in his very expensive car, he picked me up, as previously arranged by him, and the passenger seat is covered in stuff. Trash, clothes, books. Took him a while to clear it all off the seat. Not sure where he expected me to sit, but he was a little flustered when he realized I would actually need physical space to sit in his car. But whatever. Then we get in, and he says so, where do you want to eat? Which I thought was weird that he didn't have a plan. He was the one organizing the date, so I mentioned a few places not far from my house. Simple, inexpensive ones. But then he sees a Dennis on the corner and says hey, let's just go here. Which is weird, because I didn't know people under the age of 68 at Dennis during the day, while well, not high. But okay, they've got some good burgers on the menu, right? We go in, and he orders a side salad, with a water. Feeling uncomfortable now at eating a full meal, while he has a small plate of lettuce, I end up ordering the same thing, with a different kind of dressing. And then I listen to him talk about the relationship he just got out of which had been the most important one of his life. For 45 minutes he's going on about it. Turns out he had been dating her for all of 2 weeks. Real life changing stuff, yaddle. At this point I'm very glad we had arranged to meet up with friends for the last part of the date, as this was not going well. So we get in his car and he says hey, slight change of plan. We've all decided to go to a different dance tonight. Hope that's okay. And he takes me to a church dance. Not just any church dance. A youth church dance. We were both 24 at this point. I was so in shock when we showed up. I didn't know what to say. But my friends who set us up were apparently supposed to meet us there. And I had no way home otherwise. So I went in. There was a giant balloon arch in the entryway. Spelling out yeehaw. There was a small table with some cookies and chips at the back, and then a basketball court with sad streamers hanging from the hoops, with a bunch of 17 to 19 year olds standing around awkwardly, while like 6 people did the high school slow dance, arms on shoulders, slowly swaying. It was like a really hilarious prank, except it wasn't. My date makes a beeline for the food table, and began to inhale the cookies. I began texting my friend asking whether asterisk and percent she is, and did she know this was the plan? But I was getting no service in this building. Then, a guy came up to my date, and recognized him from church and they started chatting. This new guy then gestured at me, and said are you with a date, man? And my date said oh, yeah, this is, uh, what was your name again? Asshole had forgotten my name. It's not like I only said it once, and then he didn't hear it again. We were set up my mutual friends who both used my name. He called me twice, and used my name both times. WTF. So then he got a text, that our friends aren't coming after all, my phone still had no service. So I told him I was tired, and would like to go home please. He was surprised by this, really, but agreed to drive me home. We got in the car, drove about a block, and ran out of gas. Luckily there was a gas station about 3 blocks further on. So he ran up, to see about getting a loaner gas can or something. But he came back, and told me, that they don't do loaners, so he would have to buy one, and he didn't feel like spending $5 on a plastic gas can. So we would need to push his car 3 blocks to the pump. Now, I was in heels and a dress, but okay. Turns out wheel push meant he would steer and I would go behind the car and do most of the pushing. Great. We got to the pump, he put in $5 worth of gas and we drove to my house. When we got to the door, he walked me to the door. I turned to him and started to say that was fun because I'm a polite person. But I'm also an honest person and I didn't want to tell what would be the biggest lie of my life. 
so I stopped myself halfway and instead said that was interesting. Then I bolted inside and half laughed, half cried my way to the shower. Our mutual friend told me the next day that my date had had a great time and would like to go out with me again. I told this friend that I really didn't think that would work out. Ugh. It was my first ever real date, junior year of high school, and he was a year older than me. He picked me up almost an hour early, so we had to sit in the parking lot in the movie theater and wait until it was time to go in. He laid his seat back and started talking about past girlfriends. Then in the movie he kept whispering in my ear betting things, asking what he gets from me if he gets it right. I bet I know what movie this trailer is for, if I get it right what do I get? Needless to say, I wasn't enjoying myself. He insisted that we go to dinner after the movie, so I agreed, and while we were there he grabbed my phone from me claiming that he hates when people text during dates. Even though I wasn't even on it, he kept it next to him for the entire ready of dinner and eventually opened it up, read my texts, and texted my mom about how our date was going. All the while our waiters, we had two, one was mentally disabled, were commenting on how cute of a couple we were, and the other was lingering by our table throughout our meal. When that was over he refused to take me home. I told him that he had two, and he responded by pulling out a quarter and saying okay I'm going to flip this coin. Heads I take you home. Tells we make it interesting. Thank god it landed on heads, and he was forced to take me home but he still insisted on taking me the long way home. On the drive home we rode in silence, no music or anything, and he held my hand. I tried to make conversation and commented on the lightning. He then said every time the lightning strikes I'm going to kiss you, and he continued to kiss my hand for 15 minutes all the way to my house. I texted my mom and told her to wait outside for me because I didn't want him to kiss me. He taught me to always drive myself on first dates. I felt uncomfortable that he even knew where I lived. I, F, was recently single after a long relationship ended and decided to try out Tinder whilst traveling for work. I found a really attractive and intelligent chap called Alex who agreed to meet me for a drink. We got chatting and I found out he was doing research in theater and he was very passionate about this. Great. I love when people are passionate about their work. As we left the pub to go to another place, he started spontaneously tap dancing and twirled around a few lamp posts. Okay, so he likes to dance. That's kind of endearing. He showed me all over the city and was a fantastic tour guide. I got to see some very special places. He confided in me about how close he is to his mother and how he talks to her every day. Well, I don't have the best relationship with mine, so I have no idea what constitutes normal, so okay then. That sounds nice for them both. We talked about a love lives, and he said that no matter what, he always seemed to reach a point of feeling a bit mad about the girl after a few months. He had never had a relationship longer than that. He was in his early 30s. The evening drew on, and I just wasn't feeling it, but wanted to give him a chance. He showed me around where he worked, pointed out the props he had sourced for the theater. Then he kissed me. It was as passionate as kissing the back of my own hand. Oh well. As we walked to the point where our paths would forever diverge, he showed me the place where the Whitney Houston film would be screened soon. He said it was terrible they chose that venue because you can't dance in those narrow aisles and if you see Whitney you have to dance. After the date I messaged one of my friends, who is a gay man, to find out if I was homophobic for thinking Alex might be closeted. Darling, he's flaming. Was his response. <laughs> Mine is a series of dates that led to the weirdest one. I was a student at a big state school, and it was very possible to meet someone at a party and never see them again. I chatted with a woman a few times who was always interesting and engaging. She was a Christian and outspoken about her faith. I'm cool with that, but I'm not all that outspoken myself. I asked her out to dinner and a movie after the second or third time of running into her and chatting and she said yes. I wanted to keep it traditional and do the whole date thing, so I cleaned up and picked her up to go to a restaurant and a movie. It went well. 
we hugged, said our goodbyes, and that was it. We wound up going out again for a drink or something, and things seemed to go okay a second time. It was sort of platonic, but we never had a conversation where we said that we were just going to be friends or something else. In either case, we were definitely going on dates. So, I invited her out on my signature, mover can you trip on a local river? It's spring fed, crystal clear, and there are a number of deep springs with floating docks. It's a great time. We both worked retail and had a day off in the middle of the week, so that was the plan. When she got in the truck, she was surprised to hear that she would be needing a bathing suit to go canoeing, and so we stopped at Target for her to buy one. I received specific instructions to stay in the truck while she shopped. No big deal. When she got back to the truck, she let me know that she bought a two-piece because all of the one-piece bathing suits didn't work. Awesome. Church chicks have to send out those kinds of qualifiers. Things are going swimmingly. Except she followed up with it doesn't matter. You will never see me in a bathing suit anyway. That was weird, but okay. The canoeing was fun. We swam. She swam in a t-shirt. That was weird. But, overall, we had fun. On the way back to town, I asked if she wanted to order a pizza and watch a movie. She said she couldn't because she and her roommate had a policy that boys were not allowed over alone. Then she backed up and said that well, since these weren't dates and we weren't dating, that it would be okay for me to come over, but I had to leave by 9 o'clock. Hold up, I said. These are dates. She got all weird about how these weren't dates, that we were just friends, and that she was not going to date. God would provide her with a husband on his accord. Right, I said. And these are dates. I'm not sure how you missed that. She went on to talk about dating and marriage, and then dropped that she knew I wasn't the one, because God told her that her husband was a baseball player. She knew that her husband was going to be a baseball player and she would consider going on a date with a baseball player, but it would be a stretch. I rescinded my offer to watch a movie and order a pizza, and that I didn't think I was interested in going down this road. Shortly after, she called my phone about a dozen times in a row because she had a flat tire and wanted me to come change it. I told her to check with the baseball team. Epilogue some time later I was at a party, standing around the keg and doing normal college student stuff when one bro asked another bro if he remembered to invite his girlfriend to the party. People in the know laughed and eventually the story came out that this random girl would come to every baseball practice and every baseball game by herself, stare and pray. She'd try and interject herself in awkward and creepy ways and she would randomly show up wherever they were. This was pre-social media, so it had to have taken a lot of effort to make this happen. So, there you go. Don't not date crazy religious women who are betrothed to collegiate athletes. My most recent date takes the cake. Started chatting with a girl on Tinder, accelerate 3 months ahead, and we both finally have time to catch up. She's vegetarian slash vegan. So I organize a traditional movie date and then dinner at a restaurant that caters to be vegans and non-vegans alike. She's over the moon, absolutely loves the idea. On the day of the date, about an hour or two before we agree to meet, she messages me asking if we can just chill at her place instead as she's feeling particularly lazy. I agree and off I go to her place. Finally get to her place after a long and busy train ride, we start chatting. Now it's dinner time, and she wants to cook up some pasta. So off to Cole's slash Woolies, grocery store, we go. We must have spent an hour or so there, it was nuts. She just couldn't work out what she wanted. Halfway through the shopping spree, she announces how thirsty she is, and decides to crack open a bottle of almond milk to cure her thirst. Being polite, she offers me a sip. Problem is though, I'm allergic to pretty much every nut. So I decline and explain why. When we finally leave the store, she gets an emergency text from a friend. His account got hacked, and private pictures were being leaked by the hacker. We get home, and start unpacking the shopping. Her friend is incredibly distraught, so she wants to help him out. She apologizes to me for getting the date short, but I tell her it's fine. She has an emergency to deal with, and we'll just have to rain check the date. 
She then goes to give me a kiss goodbye, which I have to decline because of the almond milk she drank earlier. So not only was the date a roller coaster from beginning to end, I was also cock blocked by my own allergies. It seems I'm late to the party, I can't resist, and my friends hate hearing this story over and over again. I met a girl on Tinder and made plans to pick her up at her place. She comes outside of a total shithole house and she is at least 100 pounds bigger than her pictures. I also noticed that her face was somehow an entirely different shape and texture. I rolled with it so as not to be a dick. She asked me to walk with her to a bar around the corner and is acting very shy, not making eye contact. The bar turned out to be on the other side of a very busy highway and we had to cross it. We get to the bar and suddenly she's an entirely different person. She saw several people there that she knew, all of them looked like drug addicts, and she did this thing where she yelled their name for a long time. It was so embarrassing to watch, but I also caught a glimpse of her completely rotten teeth and tongue ring that I could only imagine to be super fucking infected 24 over 7. We sit down at a table and she immediately tries to sit on the same side of the booth with me. Nope. I make her sit across from me, and she starts hiding her mouth and face with her hands. She points at a guy and is like that's my exo. And him too. And she seems super proud of it. At this point it's just too awkward. I apologize and tell her I'm leaving. She catches up to me outside and is hysterically crying. She literally asked me if it's because I'm jealous that I saw her exes. She confessed that one of them is the father of one of her kids, idk how many she has, and that he's a sleazeball and doesn't mean anything to her. She begs me to stay and starts giving me a sob story about how she can't feed her babies or pay rent etc. This is all awkward because I can't time the highway traffic to be able to sprint across it, so I'm standing there listening to her for a good 2 or 3 minutes. At one point I just ran across to the divider and stood there, the whole time she was screaming my name. I have never been so embarrassed to be associated with someone for the hour or so I was there. Holy shit. I've told this story here before, but it remains my strangest date to this day. At the time, someone commented slash r slash and which is pretty bad, since I actually left out a few details for the sake of brevity. So many adventures, so I'll stick with the highlights. Dinner seemed to go alright, except that he drank most of a shared pitcher of margaritas by himself, then drank all the liquor I had at home. I was kind of irked, so we go searching for more. The first place was closing up, it's Sunday, so he goes up and bangs on the windows, loudly demanding that they sell us some beer and calling them assholes while I die of embarrassment. At the next place, after they served us, he casually said, oh yeah, I don't have any money, so you're going to have to get that. Not that I expected him to pay for my beer, but he expected me to pay for for his. In conversation, he mentioned that his favorite book was Ulysses and compared himself to Jack Kerouac. I asked him what kind of movies he liked, only for him to snottily retort that he watches films. He had me read a short story he wrote that, frankly, was pretty terrible, but when I offered polite criticism, he got angry and said I just didn't understand. That was the problem with being a natural writer, he said. No one understands. At one point during the evening he wanted to check on his dog. He said it wasn't far, but it turned out to be a long drive to the middle of nowhere. Nothing was open, and I had to piss really bad. It was the most resentful roadside pee imaginable. After he snapped at me about not understanding his writing, I said I was tired and he should go. He asked me for $3 for gas. I wanted him gone so much I actually gave it to him. Edit. A few people have assumed that he was driving me around drunk, but this is not the case. I insisted on driving. This is what made his request for gas money so goddamn outrageous. So hopefully that's cleared up. I later found out that he had a huge coke problem and he told the mutual friend who set us up that we had sex that night but that I ghosted him after. The ghosting part was true, anyway. I have posted this on a couple of other relevant threads in the past. 
so I take this girl out to a bar slash restaurant, meeting her for the first time. After talking on an online dating site, her profile said she was a secretary or something. After she orders her food, she drops the bomb. She tells me for the past 7 years, she has been a professional dominatrix. So I'm an open-minded guy, I'm cool with this. She probably has some funny stories right? Well. She starts telling me these stories, and for the first half hour or so, they are pretty entertaining. Eventually though, I want to talk about other things. However, anytime I try to change the subject, she immediately brings it back to dudes she pooped on. It got weird, I could barely get a word in. She basically didn't take a breath for 3 hours. Again, I'm a really open minded guy. But there's only so many consecutive stories of ball gags and double sided dildo, but fucking a person can take before even the most open minded amongst us start to feel uncomfortable. At one point, I excuse myself to go to the bathroom. As I stand up and turn around, she seizes this chance to smack my butt and says your ass looks like a baby pumpkin. I could bounce a quarter off it and get back two dimes and a nickel. Keep in mind, this lady is a professional. It was crisp and painful. To put this in perspective I was wearing thick jeans, she hid me in my back pocket, and when I checked myself for damage in the bathroom there was a clear fat red handprint on my butt cheek. Like, I could see the lines in her hand. I could have mooned a psychic, and they would have been able to predict her future. So I'm about done with this. We finish the meal, and I drive her home. While she still blabs tales of donkey tail, but plugs and toys I've never heard of going in places I wish I hadn't heard. So I pull in her driveway. The second the car goes into park she immediately grabs my nuts. Like specifically targeted them. And it wasn't sexy, it was a hostage situation where she had all the power. Then she straight licks the side of my face, chin to hairline, her tongue as big as a Shetland pony. I do not want... Then she looks me in the eyes and says menacingly I'm gonna strap you into my sex dungeon. The fuck you are, I choose life. I think to myself. How do I get out of this? She literally has me by the balls here. So here's what I come up with. I tell her that hell yeah, let's do it. I have a special toy I keep in my trunk, is that okay? She says sure, bring any toys you want. So I tell her to meet me at her doorstep while I bust it out because I want it to be a surprise. As she steps out the car she gives me a look that she thinks is sexy but is actually terrifying. The second her feet touch the ground, I slam the car in reverse and fly out of her driveway as fast as my car can go. You know how most people pull out of a driveway, switch to drive, then drive off ahead? I did not do that. I didn't want that one second of switching gears to give her the chance to catch me. I pulled out the driveway and just kept going down the street in reverse for like 5 blocks. The passenger door was flapping around, still open because I took off before she shut it. When I'm satisfied she won't catch me, I close the door, put it in drive, and go home. Gotta get back on that horse, right? Wrong. I got home. Iced my balls and deleted my online dating profile. Not today, Satan. I briefly dated a girl who was pursuing a PhD in venomous reptile biology or something like that. On our second date she asked if I wanted to see something cool and I happily obliged. She brought me to campus. It was a weekend and almost no one was around and down some halls and to what looked like a bank vault door that had a sign on it that read something like no access and then something about venomous reptiles and then listed three names indicating that if you needed to get in you had to call one of those people and of course it listed the phone numbers of those people as well. One of those names was the girl I was with. So she takes out a set of keys, opens this massive door, and immediately I realized that this was going to be a very strange experience. You couldn't hear it from the outside because the door was so thick, but as soon as she opened the door it was like going into a walk-in closet that housed hundreds of rattlesnakes. The whole room vibrated with their tails. It was horrific. The walls were basically lined with pull-out drawers. You couldn't really see the snakes that easily until she pulled out the drawers. 
Each drawer was something like plexiglass, and when she pulled open the drawers, each one had a plexiglass lid. Every one of those drawers housed a venomous snake or lizard. She was presently working on a project that involved the mating of chiller monsters, so that was her main focus. She opened a drawer that had a chiller and carefully took it out. Do you want to pet it? She asked, carefully holding it in such a way so that it couldn't strike. It was kind of scary, but I figured that it would be my only opportunity to do so, and so I hesitantly stroked its head. She then opened countless drawers with rattlesnakes, and every time she opened one of those drawers, the snake would strike up at her, but since the top of the drawers had glass over them, the snakes were just striking up against the glass. We spent the better part of 15 minutes in there, and in hindsight I regret not using it as a chance to make a move, but hindsight is always 20 to 20, and I was also scared of all hell, because the whole time we were in there those rattlesnakes were going nuts, and that sound wasn't really conducive to a sensual moment as far as I was concerned. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.